Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be checking out the Akko Black and Gold 3068B 65% Mechanical Keyboard. Now this keyboard goes for $90 on Amazon right now and comes in two variants. The Jelly Purple Switch variant and the Jelly Pink Switch variant. There is also a Prunus version of this keyboard which is a white keyboard with their pink and hot pink keycap set. If you are looking for a pink keyboard, Waco has you covered and it is at the exact same price with the exact same switch options. So inside the box, you get the keyboard, a keycap holder, a USB to USB-C cable, a 2.4 Hz USB connector for your computer so you can use it wirelessly, and you get the yellow accent keys. So all in all, you get a lot for your money in this scenario. Usually, Aqua keycap sets go for like $60 by themselves. The fact that you're getting premium high quality Aqua keycap set on a board that only costs $90 that also comes with Aqua's very good stock switches with a pretty nice board that is also wireless, Bluetooth, and wired is crazy to me because it is all for the low price of $90. It is a north facing board with RGB and three to five pin hot swap support. But the weird thing is, at least for mine, I did not get a switch puller inside the box. All I got was a keycap puller. Now the switches in this board configuration I'm using are the Aqua Jelly Purple switches, which are a tactile switch. And honestly, I don't really know if I'm a big fan of them. I'll be doing a full in-depth review of these switches later on in the future, but my initial thoughts aren't the greatest when it comes to how they feel right out the box. Maybe they feel better lubed, but you know, I would probably lean more to the Aqua Jelly Pink switches if I was gonna get this keyboard for someone else. The one thing I was very interested with this keyboard is how good the stabilizers were gonna be. So that is the first thing I checked. And to my surprise, they were very good right out the box. They come lubed and the lube job is pretty decent as well. They had almost zero rattle to them. Plus they were very snug into the plate. So I didn't have to add a bandaid to the stabilizer. So that was obviously very good news to hear. Another cool thing is they added plate foam to the keyboard as well. So what that means is that in between the PCB and the plate, there is foam. And that is very good because unfortunately the plate is steel. So it's not the greatest plate known to mankind. I kind of wish they went for an FR4 like they do on their higher end boards, but you know, beggars can't be choosing when you get such a great deal. Another thing they do also have is case foam. But as you'll hear in a little bit, it still sounds a little bit hollow. I'll leave the sound test here so you guys can hear how it sounds right out the box. So honestly, doesn't sound too bad. It sounds a little bit hollow. I don't really like how the modifier keys sound, but I think that's just the switch. It's not the stabilizer's fault because, you know, like I said, they're lubed and they aren't wobbly and they don't rattle at all. So I think it just might be the switch that makes them sound a bit different. Now, since this board does sound a little bit hollow, I decided to take it apart. It was honestly pretty easy to take it apart. You just want to get a thin card or something thin and put it in between the two parts of the plastic case to pry it open. Once you do that, there are only three screws holding the plate to the keyboard case. Once you get those three out, then you want to detach the wire connecting it to the PCB and then you're free to go. So what I wanted to do was add tape to the back of the PCB because not only does it remove hollowness, but it also makes the keyboard sound deeper as well, which is obviously a very nice sound signature that I personally prefer. 
I put the tape on, I put the holes where the screws go and where the case holes go as well. Put it all back together and it was honestly very easy to do. It kind of just snapped back right into place. I put the top cover on and here is the modded sound test of this keyboard. So like I said, all I really did to this keyboard was make it sound deeper, and in my opinion, it sounds nicer than it did stock. Not only does it sound deeper, you also remove that hollowness I was talking about earlier. Overall, I think this keyboard checks all the boxes that you could ask for. Good stabilizers, pretty decent switches, and a good build quality overall. I think the only thing it leans off of, sort of, is the fact that you know, it does have a plastic case, this plate is steel, and it is north facing so you do have to worry about cherry profile interference. But I think this keyboard is targeted at people who are entering the hobby and if that's the case and I'm correct, then this is probably the best entry level keyboard or budget keyboard that you could buy at the moment. I'll be leaving a link to it in the description below if you do choose to buy it. And other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.